Hey guys, Nick Sock with Demonic Procedures again with another UDK tutorial. And we're going to start off where we left off last time, where we had a small room, a light, and a player start. Now this tutorial, admittedly, is going to be a bit boring, <laughs> but you have to know the boring stuff to get to the good stuff, or else you're, when you get to the good stuff, you're not going to know what to do. So we're going to talk about what this stuff is over here, and some more of this here, and uh, more of this up here and whatnot. Uh, bear with me. If you can make this tutorial, you'll be able to build a great level, and I promise this to you now. <clears throat> so what we have here is I'm going to go over what we have right here. First, just to make it easier on the eyes, I'm going to maximize my viewport. And to do that, there's a button to the far right, maximize viewport. You can see it right here, and that will bring it up here. And we go over here now. If I hit the P, that will turn this into a top view and then to a front view, and to a side view, and then back to a perspective view. This is a great way to navigate between your different views, and this is how I do it. But you notice when I go to the top view, it's completely black. Well, I'm in unlit mode, so but if I go to brush wireframe, I will see that I can see what's going on here. And the same for the front and the side, and when I go back to perspective, it's all wireframed out and whatnot. Uh, you guys already know what these are here. What's this controller? This controller is real time, so let's just pretend that I had a particle effects or moving water or sounds and stuff. It will basically play those in real time. If this is not on, they'll basically just be static icons. But if I had this on, it will show me what they look like. Uh, vague, you know, give you a vague idea of what they look like. Um, I usually keep it turned off unless I want to see something really quickly. But if I really want to see it that bad, I usually just do a test play. Um, I already went over this game enables the big G enables a game view mode which displays a more more accurate preview of the game's graphics so it takes away all the little icons and stuff and it shows you what it, basically what your level is going to look like in game um, it's not to the point where it's exactly like it is going to look like in game but it's pretty close uh, when you start getting to bigger maps this can be a little hard on your processor so I usually don't use it too much I just test out the game the lock viewport we're not going to talk about just yet, and neither are the lock selected actors. We'll talk about that when we get to matinee. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the camera movement speed, because I've gotten uh, some complaints about this, is that when people are going to maximize your viewport, sometimes they'll click this and not know it, and all of a sudden they're zipping around super fast, because this controls their camera movement speed on how fast they navigate through their level. When this is like full up with blue, you're going to be moving very fast. When it's almost low, you're going to be moving very slow and medium you're going to be moving at a decent pace. I usually keep it at medium for mostly what I'm doing. It depends. If I'm working on a very large, open-ended map, I'll be moving around super fast so I can get to places better. But if I'm working underground in tight corners, I might be moving slowly around these tight corners. But for the most, I work in the medium speed uh, side of things. Um, I think that's decent for covering this for now because some of this stuff is a little more advanced, and we'll talk about that later down the road. All right, so <clears throat> let's talk about this over here. Starting from the top, we have the camera mode, and camera mode is basically this right here. Where we're moving around with our camera and whatnot. We have a geometry mode, which if I go into my top view and go to wireframe, I can select a builder brush here, or I can select any of the, any geometry I have right now, and I can edit this by selecting different vertices and different points. Let me go to world, uh, different points, and I can basically make brand new shapes. Can make new shapes with this and just kind of basically make my own thing um, I'm not gonna go into it too much right now but we will talk about it later down the road to promise guys a lot of this stuff we're not gonna go into I just want you to know what these icons are and then we'll talk about how to use them um, this next one is terrain editing mode and this is if you have a terrain in your level you can edit the terrain by basically changing the geometry style of it uh, texture alignment we're not gonna worry about the rest of these right now there's kind of a little advanced the builder brushes these are a different set of builder brushes by default it gives uh, UDK gives you you have the cube and the cone and the all this other good stuff if you right click any of these it will bring up a properties window where you can change the size right now it's set to 256 by 256 by 256 and you want to keep this kind of mathematics going meaning that you always want it to be either 128 256 512 1024 128 plus 128 is 256, 256 plus 256 is 512, 512 plus 512 is 1024, and you want to keep this going. So I can do a room that's 256 by 128 by 1024, 
So I'm mix matching these numbers, but I always want to keep it in that kind of range of doubling and doubling these numbers up. I don't ever want to like do 333, you know, because you can see now I'm offset from my, now see I'm going too fast. I'm getting real close in there. You can see that I'm offset from my grid here and it's going to make it a pain matching things up to each other. So we'll stick with the 256 by 256. And then we have um, a wall thickness. If we turn on hollow, and we're, it'll give a wall thickness to us. And it's really not important for subtractive worlds, but it is a little bit when you get down to additive. Uh, tessellated, not a big deal. And group name, not a big deal for now. And you can have these for everyone. Some of them have different options, of course, because the stairs has an inner radius, a step height, a step width, angle of the curve, number of steps, and it's all just fancy pantsy whatnot. You hit the build button and now I have a one of these things going on. Or I can go to my stairs uh, plane and just change this up however I want, really. Um, let me see here. Let me go to the properties of the sphere. Radius, sphere extrapolation. Let's turn this up and see what that does. Oh, there you go. Put it up to five and it makes you an actual sphere instead of a diamond. So that's helpful. And back down to one. All right. Um, then we have CSG add, which basically, since I'm going to show you what this does right now, actually, we have our room, right? Right. We're going to go to unlit mode. I'm going to create a box, and I'm going to create a box that is what is half of 112 by 112 or 128 by 128 divided by two. My math is horrible. 64, 64. So I'm going to put 64, 64, 64. Make a little boxy. I am then going to go to my front view and into wireframe and I'm going to move this over and drop it down and I'm going to go into my top view and kind of put this up against a corner in the wall somewhere. I'll put it in the middle of the room actually. So now I have a, if I go into my perspective window and unlit, or unlit mode, I kind of have this little builder brush inside my room. If I hit the add button, it now just added geometry to my level. Um, you can't really, I don't know, let me see. Add it out here? Nope. See, I cannot add out here because you can't add. This is all mass out here. You can't add to mass. All you can do is add to space that is not taken up. And considering we dug this place out, that's good space to add to. I can even move this guy up a little bit in the air. Bad size. Bad size means I'm too close to a wall or too close to this bottom pillar right here. I'm not gonna, I need room. Um, then we have CSG intersect and CSG de-intersect which basically cuts out and digs out and intersects and all that other good stuff. Um, here we have the add volume. If we right click this we get a bunch of really cool cool volumes we can add which are fun to mess around with. Post process volumes, um, lava zones, kill zones, slime, water, um, just a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Blocking volumes. Very 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 cool stuff. Very cool stuff. I'm at eight minutes. Damn. That went by quick didn't it? Um, then up here we have the file where we can create new, save, import, and export different things. We have edit, which will edit your stiff, cut, 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 ugh, cut copy, paste, duplicate, delete. Um, view, we got our drag grid. I usually don't change this too much, but uh, every once in a while you might want to change it to help move things along faster. Um, I'll show you what I mean if I go into my top view and go to brush wireframe. You can kind of see what my grid looks like now. And if I go to view, drag grid, if I go to 32, I get a bigger grid. Rule of thumb is usually don't change this. Keep it at 16. But every once in a while, if you need to get things close to each other and not matching up properly, especially with static meshes, you can try changing the drag grid. But after you're done and you get it matched up, the rule of thumb is uh, to go right back into your regular 16 drag grid. Um, brush adds, but this is basically all these are basically the same things as over here. We have build, which is the same stuff as right over here, and tools where you can create a new terrain, um, check map for areas. You can clean up your BSP materials, which can be helpful down the road. Uh, replace stuff, and then your help, of course. We're gonna go over this, I guess, next tutorial here. We're well, not gonna really go over. We'll just go at it as we go. We're gonna check out the content browser next. Start adding static meshes and building out our, our level, which is gonna be very cool. So stay tuned, guys. Um, sorry this one's a little bit boring, but I promise we'll get into the cool stuff. Uh, this is Nick Stalker with Demonic Procedures. Thanks for watching. Just remember, the demon's inside.